We are glad to be back on the streets again. We're here from Partick, Free Church of Scotland, continuing. And there are a number of us out on the street this afternoon. We're handing out some gospel tracts. And we've got our table set up here. We have some free literature available. We would be very glad if you would come along and view what we have. Ask a question maybe. We do live in times when multitudes are ignoring and dismissing Christianity. And we need to ask the question, why is it that multitudes are rejecting Christianity? The reality is that very few people have ever really considered or contemplated the gospel. Many people simply dismiss the Bible without ever having read it or studied it. But we are confident in the Bible. We believe it is the Word of God. As it says of itself, all Scripture is by inspiration of God. And therefore, the Bible is God's message to mankind. And in the Bible, we have a message that God wants to communicate to us. And therefore, it is imperative upon us that we might truly consider what the Bible says. Too many people simply dismiss the Bible, never having read it, never having studied it, simply listening to the opinions of others, they have dismissed it and the central message. Well, friends, we cannot argue with you. But rather, what we would seek to do is to ask you to come and see. Come and examine the evidence. Come and examine the Word of God. Come and read it. Come, and you will find that your eyes are opened. And as the psalmist says, you might begin to behold wondrous things out of the law of God. We are so confident in the Bible that we have a number of copies of the Bible and if you're serious and if you're genuine, you may have a free copy of God's Word. Today, God's Word is despised, but there are certain places in the world where you cannot get God's Word. And we have it freely available here. And we would seek to give it to you and to let the Word of God speak for itself. The Word of God reveals to us where we have come from. The Bible makes it clear, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God is the creator. The Bible never seeks to prove the existence of God. You may wonder, why is that so? It never seeks to prove the existence of God because you all know that God exists. God has made you in his image. We are all made in the image of God. And part of that image is the knowledge that there is the one true and living God. Not that there's simply a God, but your knowledge, the fact that the image of God is in you, you know that the one true living God is real. And therefore the Bible does not seek to prove the existence of God. 
You already know that. Many people might claim that they are atheists, but their problem is they seek to suppress the knowledge that they have. The knowledge that tells them there is a God. You know this when you do something wrong. Where did the law came from that tells you you've done something wrong? It comes from God. It's part again of that image He has created us in. He has given us a law. And our conscience will tell us when we have done things right or whether we've done things wrong. And this is something that all of us have. But because the Bible says we are sinful, we seek to suppress that knowledge. We do not live up to the light of that knowledge. And that's why there are people who call themselves atheists who do not believe in the existence of God. But God has given us evidence of His existence, not just in our conscience, but in creation itself. Look around us, friends. There is a wonderful, complex, ordered, designed creation that did not happen by chance, as the evolutionists will seek to tell us. Nothing will come from nothing. But the evolutionists will try to tell us that the world, the animals, the insect, insects, humans, everything came ultimately from nothing. Well, I've not been that long away from school, friends, but I was always taught that you will get nothing from nothing. Seven times nothing is nothing. A hundred times nothing is nothing. A million times nothing is nothing. Ten thousand million billion times nothing is nothing. You will get nothing from nothing. Therefore, it is clear that since there is something, creation, then there must be a creator. And that's what the Bible brings to us. It tells us that you have been made in the image of God. You are therefore accountable unto God. Having made you, He has given you a law, the Ten Commandments. And friends, if we understood the requirements of the Ten Commandments, we would recognize that we have broken the Ten Commandments, every single one of them. What is the first commandment? Do we know what the first commandment is? Thou shalt have no other gods before me, the Bible says. That's the first commandment. And by nature, all of us are idolaters. We have other gods. Or oh, we may not have statues that we bow before, as in primitive times. But we have our idols. We have our things that our hearts dote upon. We have things that demand our time and attention. And we have things that take the place of God. Anything that takes God's place in our life is an idol. If you are concerned with pleasure and entertainment and seeking to please yourselves continually, then your idol is yourself. Maybe you're a hard-working individual and maybe you devote a lot of your time and energy and effort to your work. Maybe you are a workaholic. Friends, if your work is taking up an inordinate place in your life, then your work is your God. 
What about education? We're here near Glasgow University. People want to get educated. Maybe they delight and love that. Maybe that is taking up too much time. Maybe their hearts are devoted to education and to learning. Anything, friends, that takes the place of God is an idol. And it is true that we do not give God his rightful place in our lives. The Lord Jesus Christ was asked on one occasion, what is the greatest commandment? And he answered by saying, the greatest commandment is that you are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And you are to love your neighbor as yourself. Which one of us has ever done that? If we had obeyed the first commandment, we would have loved the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. The more that we look at God's law, the more we realize we have broken it. And therefore, friends, because we have broken God's law, we are declared sinners in the sight of God. That's why the Bible teaches us, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single one, without exception, whether we attend a place of worship or not, it matters not, in the sight of God, before whom we will all stand one day, we are declared to be sinners. We have broken His law, and therefore we are under His just, just wrath and curse and condemnation. But we haven't come today to bring you bad news, friends. We have come today to bring you the good news of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the one who has come to save us from our sins. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who became the Son of Man, He has come down to rescue us <coughs> because we could not save ourselves. Sin has such a great hold upon us that we could never save ourselves. We could never get ourselves right with God by our own efforts and by our own achievements. Someone else had to come. Someone else had to save us. And that one was none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the one we seek to preach to you today. The Bible speaks of him from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it's all about Jesus Christ the Lord. And friends, in order to be saved, you must have Christ as your Savior. You must have Him as your Lord, and He must forgive your sins, and He is the one who alone can take you to heaven. You'll know that verse, I'm sure, but have you properly studied it? The one in John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. No one will go to heaven unless Christ takes them. No one will go to heaven unless Christ forgives their sins. No one will be in glory unless they acknowledge Him, unless they repent and believe the gospel. And that's why we're here today. We seek to preach Christ unto you, that you might see your need of Him, and that you would run to Him, that you would put your faith and hope and trust upon Him, whom to know is life everlasting. If you get a track today, please take it. If you want to stop at our table, please 
uplift some literature. It's all free. It's all concerning Jesus Christ. We're not interested in your money. We simply want to bring the good news of the gospel to you. We're from Partick, Free Church of Scotland continuing. We meet at 2 Thornwood Terrace tomorrow at 11 a.m. and again at 6.30. We would love to see you there. An open invitation to you all to come and to worship God through the Lord Jesus Christ.